Welcome to Let's Draw Digital, the show where I teach you how to create digital illustrations. I'm your host, Joe Cavena, and this is episode one, The Basics. In this episode, I'm going to teach you about hardware, software, how to create, save, and export a file. I'm only going to give a brief rundown about hardware because I covered this in a previous video. So if you want to check out the Mac Doodles for superheroes and digital illustration, it should give you more in-depth details about the hardware. So digital art is more or less art done on a computer, and there are several ways to do it. A computer mouse. Not the easiest to draw with, but with a lot of practice, a lot of people get good with a mouse. Pen tablets. These are great starting points as they're relatively inexpensive compared to other options. They need to be connected to a compatible computer, and there's a bit of a learning curve as you're drawing on something separate than what you're looking at. But with a lot of practice, people get used to it and learn to love it. Pen display tablets. Similar to pen tablets, you'll need a compatible computer for these to work. The downside is the price. It'll cost you two to three times more than a regular pen tablet at that size. The upside is drawing directly on the screen to see your art. These are much easier to transition from if you're used to drawing on paper. Tablets and all-in-ones. These are things like iPads, Surface Books, pen-compatible Android tablets. No need for a separate computer. You can draw directly on these with no attachments. The downside, of course, is they're very expensive and you usually have to buy the pen separately for about 100 bucks or so. Art software is available on every platform at a different quality and different price points. It all depends on what you want to use it for. We'll start with the heavy hitter, Photoshop. Think of Photoshop like renting an RV. It's capable of so much, but if you're just going to drive it to work, then why have it? Photoshop is great to draw on, it's on most platforms, and it's the standard for graphic design. It's also a subscription service that runs $20.99 a month by itself, or $52.99 a month with the Creative Suite package. If you're already subscribing for a different purpose, then might as well give it a shot. Otherwise, I have some better options for you. Clip Studio Paint. My personal favorite for drawing is Clip Studio Paint. It's essentially Photoshop with a clear emphasis on illustration. It runs $50 for the Pro version or $220 for the EX version. The EX version adds things like multi-page comic creation and long-form animation. So if that doesn't interest you, you can stick with the regular and upgrade if you want to later. Procreate. Procreate is only available on iPad and iPhone. Since I have neither, I can't really tell you how great it is. But I've heard great things about it and seen some great artwork come from it. For $10, if you've already splurged on a new iPad and Apple Pencil, why not do it? GIMP. GIMP is a Photoshop-like program, so its strengths are photo retouching, image manipulation, and graphic design. Oh, and it's free. Krita. Krita is another Photoshop-like painting program. It's also free. The free programs are usually lower powered and crowdsourced, so you're not gonna get the most premium experience, but I say you get a little bit more than you pay for. And that's just a handful. There are plenty more out there. So if you see one that kind of suits what you want, give it a try, they usually come with a free trial. Setting up a new file is similar to most programs. First, you need to decide CMYK or RGB. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This format is used for print, as those are the four colors usually used for printing. The range of colors you see on a page are created from those four colors. Pick this if you're using your art for print. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. Those are the three colors along with white that light pixels on a screen. So you want to use RGB for websites, video, or anything primarily used on the screen. Size. Pretty simple, just the height and width of an image. You can change your unit type from pixels to real-world measurements like inches and centimeters if you need them for print. DPI. DPI means dots per inch. Basically, the higher number, the more detail in your file. For web images, only use 72 DPI. But for art of any kind you might want to print later, I recommend using no less than 300. 600 if you plan on a large high or high-definition print. Now, the larger DPI and width and height of an image, the more processing power you're going to use. So if the device you have can only handle 150 DPI, that's fine. Just work with what you got. Saving and exporting. So now that we've got a file set up, let me do a little quick draw. And then after, I'm going to show you how to save and export.
exporting are two different things. Saving will save your project file. It will keep all of your layers, colors, brushes, whatever other data you have saved in there to come back later. Exporting will give you a shareable image like a JPEG, a PNG, or a GIF. JPEGs are good for sharing. They're a lossy format, which means it doesn't keep all of the color information in your file, but it, it makes it smaller so it's easier to send back and forth. PNGs are good for transparency. They're a little bit larger than a JPEG, but any layer that you make completely transparent will not show up in the file. TIFFs and Targas are good for very high resolution images. And GIFs, like PNGs, can preserve transparency, but it's a smaller file format, so it's a little bit more pixely, but it's also good for animation. Thanks for joining me. That's all for episode one. Come back for episode two, where I talk about layers and line weight. See you next time.